Nice to have you with us.
show it to their kids. Okay. So, uh, why don't you head to your cabins? Settle in, unpack. In his latest movie, the peacock thriller They Slash Them, Bacon returns to camp, this time playing the creepy director of an even creepier summer camp that tries to convert LGBTQ kids. I'm guessing that some of you are here because in some way you're not happy. Maybe you don't fit in. Now here I am again at camp. <laughs> I'm back at camp. Just enjoy the sunshine and work on your tan. You start the movie as sort of this appealing, welcoming guy who runs a summer camp. And then of course things take a quick turn. Well, I came in after the whole idea for me was to try to walk in somebody else's shoes. And when it comes to people who are uh, and do terrible, terrible things to other people, the first word out of someone's mouth is, oh, that guy's a monster. And to me, the frightening thing is not to make him a monster, but make him a human being. And to me, that ends up being scarier. Sure, the Geneva Convention has some protocol about this. Well, the next time I'm in Switzerland, I'll ask them. There are a lot of young actors in this movie. Are you sort of the, the wise man on set? You know what, it's funny, because now, I, I, don't, I don't even think about myself in this way, but now, I, I look around and I stop and I go, wait a second, I'm the oldest person, not even in the cast, like I'm the oldest person of the director, the crew, like everybody. The 64-year-old Bacon grew up with five siblings in Philadelphia. His mother was a school teacher. His father, a visionary urban planner who once appeared on the cover of Time magazine. He was very, very well known in Philadelphia, which, which meant that if we would walk around, he would be like, hey, yeah, yeah, you know, what, what, you know what, what's next? And I said, my mother uh, was the one that encouraged the artistic, creative side of all of us, all six of us. But my father, uh, yes, I wanted to be more famous than my father. So it was a, almost a competitive thing? Oh, yeah. yeah. No, I definitely think so. Was that the drive to send you to New York City when you were 17 years old? What was the plan? I mean, I know you went to Circle in the Square, you get off the bus at yeah. Port Authority and say, I'm here. Yep. Suitcase and a dream, 100%. In 1987, an actress named Kira Sedgwick walked into that dream while well, the pair was working together on a TV movie. They've been married now for nearly 34 years raising two children away from the Hollywood spotlight. You seem to just kind of live your life around New York City. In New York, to me, people would have a hard time believing this. To me, New York's the most celebrity-friendly place you can be. How you doing, man? How you doing, man? This reputation that New Yorkers are you know, somehow, I don't know, a little rude or something like that. To me, it's that they're busy. It's more like, hey, Kev, yeah. how you doing? Yes. Your last movie, not too, not too good. <laughs> But there is a particular public fascination with Bacon's prolific careers, thanks to the popular parlor game, Six Degrees of Kevin Bacon, where the goal is to connect any celebrity to Bacon in six movies or less. You didn't love Six Degrees of Kevin Bacon when it started. I'm totally fine with it now, you know. Oh, cool. uh, but I felt like it was a joke at my expense, basically, that, that they were saying, can you believe that this lightweight could be you know, connected to someone like Lawrence Olivier or any of the great, you know, like Louis Ward, the great, the great actors, because he's just a guy, like, of course, here, and he's trying to stuff, and he's just laughing at you. All this is just a lot of people, and I'm like, we're at 5 o'clock, we play a couple of hours, I make her play, yeah, and the kids are over, and they've got to play too. Yes, it's when you really have a great step. Sounds like a fun night. Kevin's new movie, They Slash Them, begins streaming this Friday, August 5th, on Peacock. And season three of City on a Hill premieres tonight on Showtime. Our big thanks to Bodega 88 in New York for hosting our conversation. Don't forget to subscribe to the Sunday Sit Down podcast to hear the full interview with Kevin Bacon. You can find that on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get yours. And next week, we revisit a favorite Sunday sit-down with music superstar Machine Gun Kelly, a fascinating, at times tense, conversation with the artist whose signature brand of pop punk is selling out arenas across the country this summer. Machine Gun Kelly, 
next week on Sunday Today. Let's turn now and get a quick check of your local Sunday weather. Well, locally we've got cloud cover, although I'm seeing a few peaks of sunshine out of our studios here in Northwest D.C. But generally we're going to have increase in cloud cover. Temperatures are in the 70s and 60s right now. A little humid out there, so notice that if you go eat brunch outside. And you may be able to do that after lunchtime. We'll start to see some showers. Dinner, we could have some steady rain in the forecast. Spotty showers tomorrow, mid to upper 80s, some sunshine in the afternoon. And then it's hot Tuesday through Friday, Friday through next weekend, next chance of rain. Ahead on Sunday today, our highs and lows of the week, including the sugar tantrum thrown by the Internet on the news that the beloved Choco Taco is headed to the great ice cream truck in the sky and why the public outcry just might save the dessert after all. But up next, our Sunday spotlight on the truly amazing baseball stars who play by hearing the ball and the bases. Their story when we come back in just 45 seconds. I'm a master at the time.